Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I am Falakzeeb Khan, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Industry Stalwarts interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying nurturing and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulae for many. And this is what we aim at with these sessions by making a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such personage on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Harsh Kumar Bajpai. Welcome, Mr. Bajpai. It's great to have you with us on FaceTime with leaders. Thanks, Palak. Thanks uh, uh, to you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I will try to satisfy you with uh, all the queries or the questions you have based on the experience. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Bajpai. We are also uh, glad to have you here with us today. Yeah, me too. So let me give you a, a quick brief about Mr. Bajpai. He is an accomplished and experienced senior leader in plant operations, transformation, business development, and sales facets with a career spanning over two and a half decades. He has held key management positions in Fortune 500 companies, such as CRRC, Bombardier and ABP, as well as Eros Metals, and has a strong track record of successfully leading turnaround management, improving performance and productivity and driving business development and sales. He is a staunch advocate of the Make in India strategy and has played some vital roles in promoting it across organizations he has worked for. At present, he is serving as the Managing Director of Shwehag India Private Limited, leading the company's operations in India and the South Asia Pacific region. Glad to have you here with us today. Thank you. Yes, uh, Falag, it will be opportunity for me, as I told you, that uh, to share my experience and Definitely. to give some insight to the new generations which will come. Yes. What is the easy way to do things? What things need to be adopted in order to be successful? Definitely. Because you are aware that 1% of the population of employees could take up a bigger role because of certain habits, because of certain behaviors. It is not only the technical know-how. So I will try to satisfy uh, today's session with uh, my inputs. Definitely. So firstly, I would like to ask you, Mr. Bajpai, could you please let our viewers know about your journey of becoming a managing director of Shubhag India Private Limited? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, becoming a managing director, as I told you, there are certain behavioral aspects, then your thought process. And uh, yes, uh, uh, knowledge is also one of the things. Then uh, what is the expertise you inculcate during uh, the career span? That also plays a very vital role. But I will tell you that my journey to be a leader started from my college days. Okay. Yeah, because at that time I was part of student union. I used to be general secretary of the college. Then I participated in various uh, student forums. So that was the time from where I was able to interact with people. I was able to interact with authorities. I was able to... Uh, do a lot of uh, people engagement and management also because really it is one of the major leadership ca characteristics which you need to project while uh, you are serving any organization that how you engage people so during those days i was also associated with uh, shri nitinji gadkari devendra fadnavi sunil Sh shinde so these were all uh, top brass now but at that time they were our uh, student uh, leaders i will say so they marched into politics and I marched into the corporate world. So that is the difference. And both the leadership has got a, a different meaning and a different behavior need to be projected where 
they are being uh, elected by votes and we are being selected by uh, our behaviors, our way of engaging people. So it is not voting, but it is by acceptance. So there is a vast difference. My journey basically started uh, in Nagpur, where I worked with uh, some of the small companies. Initially, I will not take uh, too much of time. But uh, it was a, a very, uh, I will say, not a developed uh, industrial area. So I started accepting voucher payment without any PF. So no, no statutory compliances. So that was the environment from where I started my career. Later on, the better way of uh, getting the salary, I got opportunity in uh, Jaiswal's Nico. So they were into castings. So I got opportunity to lead their uh, quality uh, system. And as you must be aware, in uh, those days, ISO just ventured into India. Right. So I was very fortunate to uh, lead that uh, initiative. It was very new in India because at those times, people used to call it as Satyanaran Katha because there were uh, five uh, uh, qualifications and there were five, there are five days in Satyanaran Katha. So I was... Uh, uh, leading uh, that initiative and from there my real journey started for quality. So I was leading manufacturing plus quality and this was my role where I used to interact with uh, the management frequently because the learning has to be transferred to the management then only we can take uh, uh, to the plant level. So here I got opportunity to learn about uh, ISO 9000 that what is ISO 9000, why it is important. So from uh, product management to process management. Then uh, I joined uh, uh, Eros Metalwork, which were basically the ancillaries for uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. So they were manufacturing a lot of uh, automobile components. And uh, I was leading their manufacturing plus quality. And as a part of new initiative, which was uh, taken up by Mahindra and Mahindra, they were launching two new tractors. So I was part of their new uh, product development team. So at that time, I got to learn uh, more about QS 9000. And now then it uh, transformed into uh, TS 16949. And now it is being called as ITF 16949. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of developments which has happened. So it was always a learning for me during uh, each uh, uh, opportunity which I got. Then from... Uh, uh, Eros Metal Works, I joined uh, PIX Transmission. So there uh, they had uh, a different kind of workforce where uh, there were uh, around five unions. Then there was a, there were, uh, the company was uh, adaptive to a very old uh, culture. So I was able to make a large change, I will say, that uh, I asked them to adopt to some uh, standards like uh, we also took up QS 9000 as one of the standard way of working. Yes. So then I went for a Six Sigma Black Belt course. Nowadays, it is sold out course. But those mm -hmm. days, it was not uh, so easy. It took four months for, to me, for me to complete the course. There were, a quali there were a different qualifications. Like uh, whatever saving we were projecting, it should be financially validated by the chartered uh, finance person. Then only there was an acceptance. There was an amount of saving which was need to be projected and then only the certification was done. So that okay. I uh, did it from uh, Caterpillar University, US. And uh, the first initiative which I took was that uh, I asked my management to purchase a old plant somewhere because space was a constraint. Yes. And uh, through that uh, Six Sigma initiative, I was able to control on... Uh, most of the quality factors, which will not in line with the expectations. With uh, the new plant being purchased at a very cheaper rate, I will say, we were able to uh, do more than double the uh, turnover in a span of uh, one year. So that was a, a, a thing which I will say that soon you go for education, you your uh, outlook change you become more confident to discuss with the top authorities, top people. So I was always, a, uh, I will say, pit of uh, my top management in PICS. 
so i was handling all the manufacturing activities then handling all uh, uh, people grievances because as i told you there were five unions so this made me more tough to take uh, decisions i got opportunity i got a good mentors also who have given me opportunity for learning then after uh, pix i uh, joined abb so i directly got opportunity because based on the deliverables which i had uh, given yes and uh, the kind of journey i was into more towards quality systems than uh, six sigma projects and other things so uh, i got opportunity with abb as assistant vice president of operational excellence so this was the biggest opportunity for me uh, so in uh, abb uh, we took lot of initiatives my major role was that uh, there were 13 units in abb uh on which uh, in which i was taking lot of initiatives related to supply chain cost reduction the main purpose was that whatever targets are being given to those units those should be fulfilled with initiative so ultimately i was responsible to make uh, that uh, business unit a success mm -hmm. so that they should uh, deliver their financial figures the amount of profitability which was uh, uh, expected so that was my role from uh, so even i was uh, awarded as the best uh, employee of the year by the whole abb group wow that that's, that's wonderful yeah then uh, i joined uh, suzlon energy because my flair was towards the uh, project so without more concern in or uh, thinking about the project itself i joined uh, suzlon energy and so without more concerning or thinking about the position i was losing i joined uh, suzlon energy so i was looking after uh, new product development and design change management and also managing their projects okay so and uh, in abb i got opportunity to go in for the apex education basics in supply chain management in uh, suzlon uh, i went uh, for uh, project management education so there uh, i was able to reduce their uh, mean uh, improve their mean time between failures by 30% so availability of turbine improved by 30% which was generating mm -hmm. power later on i joined uh, bombardier where i was responsible for uh, bogi manufacturing then uh, uh, in few days i was uh, being promoted as a head of operations india for uh, the whole rolling stock during that uh, period i was able to uh, bring lot of uh, european business plus australian business to the site for uh, execution Uh, because of the low cost uh, capability we had so we even generated margin for uh, the european projects supplying components from india okay. and uh, uh, if you are aware qngr was one of the first export uh, metro export project which was executed and it was executed under my leadership so okay, it was to be manufactured in india uh, sorry china but i brought that project to india discussing with management that uh, what are the benefits they can get more over what the chinese are committing mm. so uh, we exported 75 metro trains to australia so queensland uh, metro is being manufactured in india all 75 trains wow and uh, we established a record of manufacturing seven metro trains in a month that means 36 coaches so this is still a record which i created uh then uh, i joined uh, crrc uh, basically i started uh, developing one uh, pollution control uh, product so if you are aware that uh, pollution is one of the next demon which uh, we will get mm -hmm. after this uh, covid yes and it is not so easy to handle of course so i worked on that every day problem yeah so two years i worked on the product i developed the product got it certified it is now patented and i handed over business to some of my uh, known people and then i uh, marched towards my journey uh, so i joined the crrc as director of operations uh, so there uh, uh, as you are aware that crrc is a chinese company and there were restrictions from the government of india but i tried my level best going to dpiit meeting the ministries in order to get the approval because they have one project 
of uh, Bangalore Metro, which they are executing. So we were not able to do a successful journey. So I joined uh, then Shivag, where I am. So basically, uh, Shivag is into business of uh, manufacturing high-speed track components and turnout. So this Delhi Metro uh, Merit uh, uh, RITS project on which the trains have already qualified for 180 kilometers. So that tra track is being laid by us. So yes, so that is my journey. <laughs> yes. So I, in nutshell, I will tell you that in order to be, uh, take higher positions in uh, management, uh, people need to leave that thought process of two-time punch and one-time lunch. That means constraint of working for eight hours, change right. the mindset, take the risk and march ahead. So this is my journey, I will say. That's that's really great and interesting. And of course, like you've really come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you have served in Make in India roles in different firms you have worked for. Could you mention some of your important achievements at any of the firms? See, uh, I am fond of Make in India from the uh, very start of my career. And in PIX transmission, if uh, uh, from a PIX transmission, my journey for Make in India started because there were certain components which we were importing. Later on, we start manufacturing in India. The major achievement, if uh, you will ask me, then it was in Bombardier, where, as I told you, that I secured that project uh, from China to India, uh, convincing management that uh, there are lot of things like uh, we can give quality advantage, even cost advantage, then deliver is on time, then uh, more reliable product from uh, India. And uh, we can take a lot of initiatives which can give them uh, benefits more than compared to China. So as I told you that we manufactured 75 trains, that was the first export for Metro train, which was done from India. So we manufactured 450 coach. And uh, the project ended up with a good margin, I will say, for the site and even for the project. Then we have given a lot of advantages to our uh, European counterparts uh, producing some components in, in India. I got uh, transferred uh, around uh, 400 uh, crore worth uh, uh, products from uh, Europe to India. Then we also supported the uh, Sao Polo project. First monorail bogey was manufactured in India in our plant. And uh, we ended up with a huge margin, even uh, passing on benefit to the project. Uh, so yes, so we have given all Make in India produ products to Hungary, Czech Republic, France, Australia, uh, then uh, North America, South Africa. So I think uh, we are excelling uh, in this uh, Make in India. So that's really great. How do you expect the Make in India initiative to change India's economic or corporate landscape in the coming years? So as you are aware that uh, India is marching towards 5 trillion economy. There are a lot of projects which are happening and development as a uh, uh, as I am aware of a railway, so mostly I will be covering this uh, railway part that uh, you might be aware that in 2014, the allocation for uh, railway expenditure was around uh, 40 crores, 40,000 crores. And now the allocation per year is 2,50,000 crores. So if you compare the whole business in another part of the world and India, then I think uh, it is a comparative figure. So most of the business is happening in India. And India, Indian government is emphasizing on making India Atmanirbhar Bharat, then Gati Se Pragati. Ji. So if we consolidate all three together, then opportunities are there in India. Most of the companies, if you will see, just I'm telling you about railway manufacturing. We have all the international players in India who has got their own manufacturing facility. Like uh, Bombardier was here. Now it is being sold to Elstom, but Bombardier had a facility. Elstom has got its own facility. CAF is also trying to uh, establish their own plant. TMH Russia has also come up in uh, uh, India. Then uh, Stadler is also trying to align with Medha. So in some way or the other with uh, 
considering joint venture or establishing their own plant, all the manufacturer globally are coming and establishing their plant in India. All the technical centers are being transferred to India, whether it is the uh, iPhone, if you are aware, they have started uh, manufacturing in India. Yes, yes. So uh, big uh, infrastructure companies, they have their offices in India. So as such, I think this is a, one of the uh, success, I will say, that Make in India is doing well. Innovations are being done in India that uh, uh, already qualify the Atmanirbar Bharat uh, mission. And then Gati Se Pragati. So we are into high-speed race. So yes. India has got a very good future and it will be the next manufacturing hub. I will not say it will be. It is the it is. Uh, largest manufacturing hub for uh, the global uh, market. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so have you ever had an opportunity to contribute to corporate governance measures in any of your organizations? See, as such, uh, my outlook or my thought process is whether it is an employee, senior management, vendor, or uh, uh, financer, or the owner, they all come under purview of uh, corporate governance. Because ultimately, we need to demonstrate our behavior, our ways of uh, managing things as per the expectations and in aligning to the corporate governance policies. So I uh, was not a part of uh, the direct uh, board or anything, but there were instructions which were coming to me, like uh, in Bombardier, I was a part of, I was uh, the factory manager. So ultimately had a statutory responsibilities with respect to labor laws, with respect to factory act. So I have handled that uh, responsibility well. And I will tell you that we were uh, awarded with the gold status for safety. So globally, we are admired for that. <laughs> so it was a, a major challenge because we Indians are not uh, looked uh, so, uh, that means people uh, think that we are not able to uh, do safe things. We try to right. exploit things, but uh, <laughs> there we were able to demonstrate. That's Even great. in uh, peaks transmission, there were certain suggestions uh, or resolutions were uh, passed on on my behalf, where, as I told you, that uh, space was a constraint. So ultimately, some way or the other, I was contributing. So our turnover, it doubled. Wow. So it was not a direct contribution, but uh, I was also aligning with management that people should behave in the way uh, the management expect. There should be ethics then uh, getting people engaged into uh, the initiatives which I take. And uh, in whole of my journey, I have to, uh, seen that uh, KPI is not only for uh, productivity or business development, but it should all, always be towards people development, people behavioral aspects. So there were KPIs that how people behave, what are the deviations which are observed. So, in this way, I was a part of uh, the corporate uh, governance, I will say. So it is not uh, required that you should be part of uh, the board, but you can uh, contribute more Definitely. to the board. Yes. Really have the intent to do something. Yes. So as an expert in environmental, social and corporate governance, what values do you bring to the table for the corporate world? See, I will say... If you see the Indian scenario, with respect to Indian scenario, I will say, and I will be very blunt to say everything about environment, because I am, uh, uh, I like that uh, there should be uh, initiatives uh, towards environment. I will tell you my personal uh, initiative for environment. Last year, I planted, till last year, right? till last year, I planted 4,000 trees. Wow. Okay. 4,000. So it is there in LinkedIn. Where I put uh, these type of things, I want that people should also get adopted to it. Yes. Because uh, in your lifetime, you will consume at least 20 trees, big trees for your needs. You need paper. You need a lot of things. So you will be consuming 20 trees, what you are contributing. So that matters a lot. So I think uh, in India, if you will see that we have uh, 10 most polluted countries in the world, it is in India. So there are a lot of things. It is not only labeling net zero, but a lot of things need to be done. If you will see the current system, it is being addressed to CSR, Corporate Social Responsibilities. 
and what is the percentage? 2% out of the total profit. So we are exploiting 98% right. of more resources in order to uh, uh, make the business and contributing yes. only 2%. That's not. Trees are being cut. A lot of exploitations are happening during this urbanization. So, and even that 2%, I am part of the organization, I will tell you that this is being taken up as a uh, marketing uh, tool, CSR. People will go, uh, like uh, one of the CSR, a uh, lot of companies were doing, that uh, it was related to uh, tree plantation. Mm. They planted 1,000 trees. Okay. And the cost of those 1,000 trees, I just asked them, it was around uh, 50,000 uh, rupees. 50 okay. rupees per tree. And their budget was 7.5 lakh. So balance 70 lakh, 7 lakh, they invest invested on promoting people, giving them t-shirt, giving them claps. Oh my God. So, so this is not uh, the way the CSR should have. Should have yes, yeah. they should so have. So now this uh, ESG is really required, not only in India, but uh, there are countries where uh, carbon emission is a challenge. So I think uh, with this uh, environment, then our social behavior and governance with come together in order to see that how we march towards net zero. And it is really required. And in India, it will make a very big impact. We need more ESG experts to be part of the uh, governance mechanism because real environmental aspects need to be studied how much I am exploiting and how much I am contributing. Then only we will keep this world safe for our future generations to come. You are and even my generation next. Definitely. We need a stable environment to do yes. that. Indeed, a great thought. Yeah. So when we talk about technology, what changes have you seen in your field with changes in technology? And what changes do you foresee with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, Web 3.0, blockchain, big data, etc.? See, I will uh, give you a world 10 years back. So. I will give you an example of manufacturing facility I was leading, where for uh, repairing a machine, we were require, required to wait for one month, two months for a workman to travel to India and get the repairs done. Right. Now with this uh, technology, uh, they take uh, over the machine online and uh, he is sitting somewhere in, uh, in the other part of the world. He will change the program, guide us, what is the problem? So now we can uh, do maintenance within a day, which was taking around two months. We are into industrial revolution four. So artificial intelligence, if I tell you about metros, we will be able to see driverless metros. So the metro will take its, uh, that program will take its own decision. Yes. Then stop. Then uh, whether the tracks are okay or not. Right. So then uh, machine learning is also part of it. That we are programming the machine with the data what we have collected, that how the decisions should happen. So I think it is uh, reducing the time for taking the decision. And I will say real-time decision making. Like driver, if we keep a driver in a train, it will take time. Uh, he will have to struggle in order to decide whether I should continue with the train or not, but now it is pre-programmed. So these technologies are really supporting in order to uh, improve the productivity, in order to improve the quality levels, then yes. timeliness. So it is contributing a lot. Yes. So as you know, we are building a community of FaceTime with leaders. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about this initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hewal Mehta, and the whole World Development Corporation team? So Ji. extend my thanks to Mr. Pathan and Mr. Mehta because I have gone through a lot of courses. So it is well-planned. And even this initiative, we used to call multi-skilling. 
so multi skilling is always required whether i am from i was not knowing anything about a corporate governance in detail but i have gone through this course and i am able to speak about esg about corporate governance i was able to connect it that yes this i was always uh, this i was already doing yes but the vocabulary was different so i think uh, this is a good platform where uh, we will be able to or uh, this uh, platform will uh, uh, what i will say that uh, give some outlook to the newcomers that uh, how uh, what kind of behavior we should project what kind of a thought process uh, uh, should be there in order to take a higher roles this will also support them in decision making because while we are discussing there are some topics which is a problem for one individual to solve yes so i think that this type of initiative should continue that's great thank you so much it was fantastic conversing with you and i'm confident that your insights will inspire future leaders thank you once again mr harsh thank kumar bajpai for joining us today we wish you the best for your future endeavors and moreover trust that this initiative by directors institute unquestionably expanded the participants understanding and enriched their minds thank you so much for being with us today here on face time with leaders we thank hope you. to see thank you again yeah thanks it was really great with all your wonderful insights and experiences that you shared with us i'm sure everyone watching this it will really be helpful for their growth in their business too yeah and uh, extend my thanks to the management of director institute and uh, whenever required i will contribute so, that's really great great yeah. to know glad best platform i will say <laughs> and people should take advantage of it hanji yeah yes thank, thank you thank you, you so much thanks Yes.